Hello, welcome back to the channel. You know, today I want to talk about this lens. It's a Viltrox 35mm f1.8 for the Nikon Z mount. Now, as you know, uh, a little while ago I tested out the Viltrox 24mm f1.8 lens for the Nikon Z system and I compared it to the equivalent Nikon lens and that did a pretty good job. And in this video, I'm going to compare this lens with the equivalent Nikon 35mm f1.8Z, which I've been using now for a few years with great results. Now, 35mm, a lot of you will think, well, do you use 35mm for your nightscape shooting very often? Well, you know, if I get the opportunity, yes, I do. I really like these longer focal length lenses for my nightscapes for lots of reasons but the main reason is it sort of draws that milky way in just that little bit closer and i guess for that reason for me as you can see here i like to shoot at that focal length whenever i can so the things i would like to say firstly about this lens uh, it's quite a solid build quality i like it I think it doesn't feel like a cheap lens by uh, stretch of the imagination. It's really good. It's got a separate aperture ring, and that's something that the Nikon lens doesn't have. And so a lot of people, especially video shooters, are going to like that because you can just quickly move the aperture on the lens ring rather than doing it via the dials. And because it's a, a, a pretty much a stepless aperture ring, that really works well for video. It's actually a very much a similar size and weight to the Nikon variety and you can see the two of them side by side here hardly any difference at all probably the lens hood is slightly smaller on the Viltrox but they're still both very deep lens hoods now if you know me you will know that I always have my lens hoods attached to my cameras because I see that as the first part of the lens protection and if that lens is going to hit something it's got to hit that lens hood first and it's a well protected it's a long way in there as you can see the other thing is when I'm shooting nightscapes and it's a cold frosty night and there's a bit of dew around it, it forms on the top of that lens hood but not necessarily in to the lens it will eventually get there but uh, I've found that the lens hood is a really good uh, protection so uh, the other thing about this, it's an autofocus lens and it works really well. The autofocus is silent. I've done a bit of just general photography around the house here, uh, shooting various subjects and great. Yeah, it doesn't seem any different to the Nikon lens from that perspective. Uh, shot a bit of video and uh, sometimes lenses in video when they're autofocusing, they'll, they'll hunt a bit or worse than that even is that they'll be noisy. You can hear the focus motors. Well, nothing in this lens. So I think for as a, as a, a video lens, this really is quite good. Now, the question a lot of you are going to be asking about this lens is how much does it cost and what's the cost variation between these two lenses? Okay, so this one, the Viltrox, is about 600 Australian dollars. Okay, now that's going to vary depending on where you are in the world, but 600 Australian dollars. Now compare that to around about a thousand dollars Australian for this Nikon 35mm Z lens. And that's quite a considerable savings if you go for the Viltrox. Okay, well that's, money is one thing. Saving dollars is, uh, you know, it's something we all want to do. But you know, how about the actual performance? And specifically, what's the performance like for shooting nightscape photography? All right, well, I'm going to show you right now. Well, I took it out for a run the other night, and I'd like to show you some of the images I captured with it. I had to wait a while to get a clear night to try the Viltrox lens, but the other night I took a trip out to a favorite location of mine to shoot some nightscape images. I was keen to compare this lens to my Nikon 35 under the stars. Now I want to stress that this isn't a full-on technical review of this lens, but rather a real-life use case of how I go about using a lens out in the field. And I started by shooting some artistic, out-of-focus background shots using my little plastic robot as a focal point in the foreground. Now this is a technique I like to use often because it's simple and only requires a single exposure to get really good results. For this to work, you need a lens that opens the aperture pretty wide, so an f1.8 is ideal. 
For these shots, I set the aperture to f2.2, which is still wide, but just stopped down enough to give me a slightly wider focus plane. Uh, I also shot a similar composition with an old lantern sitting on a fence post. One of the things I like about this style of photography is how colorful the stars show out in the image. So having a look at these shots here in Lightroom, you can see how vibrant they are and just how well the lens captured the sharpness of the subject in focus in the foreground, but at the same time through the background really out of focus, giving us that really nice bokeh or portrait look that I was actually after. Now, I'll show the full images at the end of the video, but for this style of photography, the Viltrox 35 is doing very well. From there, I made my way to another dark location to check out an old water tank by the side of the road. For this image, I decided to do my standard fine art light painting of the foreground and shoot multiple images at infinity for the background stars. The intention here was to stack about 10 shots in sequator for noise reduction. This is a tried and true method, which I've employed for many years now. So I know what a good result should look like. Looking at the image now on screen, I'm actually really pleased with the clarity of the foreground. And I think the stars themselves look pretty good as well. But more on that in a minute. All right, now one of the things I want to mention about this Viltrox lens is that, and one of the things I love in general about the Nikon Z mount lens system is that when you start the camera up, it focuses automatically to infinity. Now that for a nightscape shooter is a great asset. Well, guess what? This lens does exactly the same thing. So you just turn the camera on, it's already focused to infinity. And that's something that I find really handy out in the field uh, one less thing to really worry about. So, all right, let's continue on. And I want to compare two images a little bit more closer. So for my final testing of this lens, I wanted to mount it on my Star Tracker and do a side-by-side -side test with the Nikon 35 millimeter lens. I set the tracker up on the side of a dirt track in the middle of nowhere. I pulled the car right up close to it to help stop the wind from hitting the camera. Now the wind was gusting a fair bit and I wanted to offset that as much as possible. So I shot the exact same composition using the same camera and settings with both lenses. They were set to f2.8, 120 second exposures at ISO 800. Now, as we look at these in Lightroom, you can see that they are indeed very similar in appearance. I'd actually say the Viltrox lens has more VIG netting around the corners, which makes the Nikon image look brighter. And as we zoom into the middle of the image, we can see that both lenses look pretty much identical. And even in the corners, they're quite similar. The stars in the corners of both lenses are not completely round, when you zoom in on them, but at normal viewing, I think they're pretty good. The thing that does stand out to me is the chromatic aberration that's more evident in the Viltrox image. But of course, this can be corrected in the software. I think overall, the two lenses seem to perform pretty much the same. And I think that's a good thing for the Viltrox as it's holding up really well with a much more expensive lens. So from there, I shot a heap more tracked shots with the Viltrox and blended in various foregrounds, which I found in the region. There was a windmill right alongside the roadway where I was shooting. So that made for an interesting composition. Unfortunately, the blades were spinning for the whole time I was there, but it worked out okay, I think. After that, I was able to compose a couple of trees in different directions, which as you know, I love to shoot. The sky was quite misty by this stage, and even though there was a bit of high level cloud around, I really loved the shots I was able to get here.
So there you go. Overall, I think a pretty good result for the Viltrox lens. Now, the big question is, would I buy this lens for my nightscape photography? Well, I'll tell you what, if I didn't already have the Nikon version, yeah, I reckon I would buy this lens because it's a lot cheaper. The results are almost on a par. Uh, one thing I didn't mention about this lens, it doesn't have weather sealing. So this one does. So if you're out in pretty bad inclement weather, lots of uh, rain around, then that's a better option for sure. But you know, for most of my nightscape shooting, uh, I'm certainly not out in the rain. Sure, I do get some uh, mist and some fog and, and uh, frost on the lenses occasionally, but uh, typically it doesn't seep through into the camera anyway, so that's not such a problem. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend this lens. I think it's not a bad option for those of you shooting with the Nikon Z mount system. So there you have it, another video. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you want to know any more about this lens or my experience with this lens, or any, in fact any other lens for that matter, just leave me a comment down below and I'll be really happy to read and respond. Uh, happy for you to subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. So until I see you in the next video, you have a fantastic week and I'll see you later.